Welcome back to this course. So far, we learned a lot of things in Python. And in this section, I want to teach you about what AI is, when to use AI, how to use AI, what is the wrong way of using AI. Because I have seen a lot of developers using AI in a wrong way. And I think you should avoid it. And this mentorship session is, I think, very important for you. So when to use AI, let's talk about it. Whenever you want to work on a bigger application, you will always be tempted with AI. If you don't know what AI is, there are a lot of tools in the market we'll explore them one by one you might already know about chat gpt you might know about different llms you might also know about open source llms many of you might have used it if you haven't used it do not worry after this section you will be able to use them to their full potential I'll teach you how. So for the entirety of this course, I did not talk about AI and I also did not talk about LLMs. And you know the reason? The reason for that is I wanted you to learn everything step by step. There was a reason behind everything I did in this course and not using AI was a very conscious decision. I did not use AI to teach you because I didn't wanted you to use AI during your learning. One of the biggest mistakes students are making across the globe is that they are using AI while they are learning. Now you can use AI to learn but when you are using AI while learning and you are practicing your problems and then you are using AI to solve those problems, you are not going to learn anything. So use as minimum AI help in solving practice problems as possible. You should be very, very raw when you are learning, especially your first programming language. And if it is Python, I would say do not go for AI at the beginning. So now let's talk about how to use AI. Once you are at a stage where you have practiced a lot of problems, you now understand everything in Python, you now understand all the concepts, object-oriented programming and whatnot. Everything is very, very clear to you. You have written, say, 100 practice programs. Now you are ready to use AI. Whenever you are working on a big application, it's always recommended that you automate the repetitive boring task. For example, let us say you always find yourself writing functions like average of two numbers, capitalizing a string, or maybe you are writing a very special function which is getting rid of all the commas in a given string. You can use AI for that. So whenever you are working with a program or a big application, you should definitely use AI to save your time. But the problem with using a lot of AI is that people tend to lose control of their applications when they are writing AI generated code. And sometimes they don't realize that they are losing control of their application, but most of the code written in the application is being controlled by AI. And when I say controlled by AI, the code is AI generated and the senior developer who is taking control of that application, who is managing everything, doesn't know how a particular module is working. So much so that he simply relies on AI and prompting. That should not be the case with your application. Otherwise you will come to a point where you'll not be able to debug your applications. With that said, we'll talk about how to use AI. What is the best way to use AI? So I'll split this video into five strategies. The number one strategy is divide and conquer. You should not prompt your AI and say something like, give me an e-commerce website. AI can actually try its best to generate an e-commerce website. And I'm not saying that it cannot do that. But again, your e-commerce website will have certain requirements. AI doesn't know what kind of e-commerce website you want to build. You can definitely tell all that using the prompts. But the problem is that if you take control of your code and you start building yourself, start using the correct frameworks, let's say you want to use Flask, you should start by creating a Flask gap. You should do everything step by step. And then you should break down that entire problem of building an e-commerce website into smaller problems. And those smaller chunks should be generated by AI. That too, if required. This is really very important. Sometimes people get dependent on AI so much that they keep on giving prompts and they don't realize that they are actually wasting their time and also they are spoiling their application at the same time. And AI cannot write very good code and the reason behind that is that a lot of code written by humans that AI is uh, trained on is not the best code, okay? So if AI is trained on bad data, it is going to generate bad data. So number one advice that I want to give you on using AI is divide and conquer. And for the repetitive chunks, for the obvious chunks of your code, for example, you want to write a function that should process a string a certain way and return it in a certain way, you can always prompt it. And in most of the cases, you can always test that code. And also you can use that code because you are not basically asking the AI to write the entire application. Now people, whenever they think about AI, they tend to use ChatGPT or Google Gemini. And sometimes um, they use other tools. There are a lot of tools in the market. But the thing is, sometimes you have the correct tool in the market made specifically for a given task. For example, if you want to write code, you can download GitHub Copilot and it has a free tier. And we'll talk about GitHub Copilot 
um, later in the section. But let me tell you that GitHub Copilot has a free tier and it's an AI code editor for everyone. You can get started for free. And if you are aggressively using it, then definitely you will have to pay. But again, the thing is that it's plans and pricing are very good because for free, you can start using it and you can install the VS code uh, extension and then you can get 2000 completions. We'll come to this, we'll install it later in this section. But again, if you have a tool specific to a certain task, you should not prompt chat GPT and try to use that tool. And if that tool doesn't work for you, then you can maybe go for chat GPT. Sometimes we have specific tool for specific tasks. Let us say there is an AI just for converting designs to code. You should use that AI instead of going to chat GPT and pasting images into chat GPT, if that makes sense. Now strategy three is going to be be very, very specific with your prompts. Take some time out and write good prompts. Instead of saying something like uh, write an e-commerce app, I'll say write an e-commerce app for my mobile store and I want to sell mobile phones, laptops and say some other electronic devices. You can always type specific things you want to sell, specific pages you want to build and specific requirements that your uh, website should follow. So if you put your prompts very correctly, frame them very nicely, specific to the requirements, you are going to get better results. Humans have become very, very lazy these days. And I would like to attribute that to AI that humans have become very, very lazy. And because of this laziness, they tend to type very small prompt and they expect AI to do everything. But that's not the case. The better the prompt, the better the result. If you refine your prompts and if you create your prompt templates, now I'll tell you what is a prompt template. But before that, let me tell you that if you specifically type a given prompt for a given task, it will always perform better. Let's say you want to debug your Python code. You can create a prompt template and save it in a TXT file. And whenever you want to debug your code, you can have that prompt template and use that prompt template and uh, use that prompt in chat GPT by making those tweaks in the same prompt. Now, how does it help? Let's say you want to work on an application, which is an e-commerce website written using Flask and Python. You can type down the specific details of your application and then at the end, ask the question about that application. So your prompt will start something like, hey, I want to build an application using Flask. I'm using Flask SQL Alchemy. I'm also using let's say a class which does this, it has these, these functions, but I want to add some more functions. I want to solve this specific problem. How do I do it in Python? Okay, or generate code for doing this in Python. And then you can change the last line for doing something else. So you have that template saved already and using the template, you can always create new prompts and save time. So you don't have to write or spend time writing longer prompts all the time because you have your application specific prompts inside a TXT file. And this really helps me when I build larger applications. Always remember that sometimes a good prompt can make a huge difference. Strategy number four is do not rely on AI too much. Use your human brain to solve or prepare solution of a problem and then use AI to implement the game plan. Always use AI as an assistant and do not replace thinking with AI. I repeat, think using your own brain and do not use AI for creativity or thinking because that is something AI cannot do. Strategy number five is that humans tend to use AI to solve their problems until unless they are writing code for production, they don't use AI. Whenever they are practicing, they don't use AI, but there is a better way to use AI while you are learning. You can generate practice problems using AI and then take control of the problem, start solving it, give your answer to chat GPT or whatever AI you are using. And then that AI will tell you what you did right, what you did wrong. You can ask it, how could I have done better? It will tell you, you could have done better by doing this. So all these things are going to help you a lot if you use AI for learning because the basic concepts can be practiced using AI. You don't need a practice book. You don't need a set of practice problems. You can simply generate practice problems using AI and then you can give solution to those problems to AI and then you can ask AI how you did and AI will tell you which are the specific areas you need to focus on and always work on training your mind, human mind. Do not try to memorize things, always train your human mind and you'll train your human mind only after making a lot of mistakes, solving problem the wrong way. Yes, you heard that right. Solving problem the wrong way is going to teach you a lot of things. Once you make mistakes, you'll realize that, yeah, I could have done it better. And then you will learn how you can do tasks in the optimal fashion. Always remember that at the end of the day, you will become a better developer if you sharpen your human mind. So always focus on sharpening your human mind. Do not memorize things and do not rely on AI too much. I hope that was helpful. And in the next video, we are going to look into some AI tools and we'll see how we can use them and leverage them for writing code. See you in the next video.